Hello and welcome to another episode of Hustle is for Life Motivation. Uh, today I have another amazing guest for with me here who's joining me uh, and uh, we're here as always to serve you, to talk to you guys uh, about what it takes to take your life to the next level, what it takes to be successful. So. Uh, today, I have somebody who's really, really special. Um, he is a multiple time TEDx speaker. He's a very sought after corporate and association speaker. He's also the host of the top rated Conversations with Passion radio show and the founder of the speaking program. He has been featured in multiple television specials. He's a, a column writer. He writes for Entrepreneur and Forbes magazine, which is a massive, massive achievement. Um, he has been featured on CBS, CTV, NBC, and ABC. Goodness, um, I was pretty much running out of alphabets there. Um, he is <laughs> also a Forbes Coaches Council member and is one of the few leaders who's been featured twice on the popular Entrepreneur on Fire show. He has also been recently featured on the One Thing podcast. He was interviewed, he has actually, in fact, interviewed 4,000 to 5,000 top leaders, uh, which just, when I read that statistic, I just was absolutely blown away. Um, so we have somebody who has peeked into some of the sharpest minds on the planet. Uh, he's also one of the most uh, recent talks. Uh, he also did a very recent talk that took him to New York City, where he had the extreme pleasure of speaking to at-risk youth at the Brooklyn Navy Yard Boys and Girls Club. Uh, he's a father of uh, a young boy, and uh, he actually also is a father to three fur babies. Uh, he is a practicing yogi and our rock recording of the year nominee. Guys, please put your hands together and help me welcome Corey Poirier to the show. Corey, thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us today. Awesome. Talal, thank you so much for having me. I'm so excited to be joining you today and see if we can uh, keep some hustle going and make some magic happen. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, to be honest with you, I, I have to say, first of all, uh, you know, generally, thank you so much for taking the time. I know you're a very, very busy person. Um, you know, you uh, recently, uh, you've just launched a book and, uh, you know, you're also working on something else. You're, you're about to launch your speaking program in January. You're opening the doors to it quite soon. So I know you're very, very busy. So seriously, thank you so much for taking the time to be here. Oh, thank you. And by the way, just as a, a little FYI, I literally, I don't know if you can see that, but I literally just got the new book yesterday. This is like the first official copy. So oh, wow. that's, that's, that's how new it is. The, the launch just finished, but yeah. it was a Kickstarter launch. So the book is literally like nobody's even seen the book yet. <laughs> it's oh, wow. that brand new. Wow. Wow. That's, uh, that's amazing. Um, and I wish you all the best with that. I really do. Um, I'm really looking forward to getting my paws on a copy of the book and just devouring it. Uh, so, you know, I, I think the, the value that it will bring to the audience will, will be absolutely phenomenal. So that's great. That's really great. Oh, thank you so much. Awesome. So awesome. appreciate it. So, Corey, let's let's start from the beginning. Um, I'm I'm really curious to see how you actually got started on this path. Uh, you know, you've interviewed like between four thousand to five thousand top leaders. I mean, that's that's a phenomenal statistic. Um, you know, I, I I don't think I've even you know. I can even fathom that and, and I, I can't even begin to imagine what your timetable looked like when you were actually on this hustle. So, um, you know, can you please maybe just uh, tell us a little bit about your journey and how, how you actually even me, uh, you know, managed to accomplish that? Yeah, absolutely. I'm happy to. And I will say I, myself, when I think about those numbers, it, it kind of blows my mind. Like I kind of do one of the mind blown things <laughs> yeah. and, uh, and to kind of put a stamp on, I guess, how big a number that is. We mentioned uh, Entrepreneur on Fire, and John uh, Lee Dumas on the show, he made this comment, and I even asked him if I could use it because it was such a great comment the way he said it, but he said, Corey, you're the first person I've ever had in the show who's interviewed more people than me. Wow. And and he said, but I will catch you, <laughs> and I know he will because he's, he's hustling it daily. Every day is a new episode wow. where I, I take now I take a little bit more spurts off in different directions. Sure. I know he'll get there. Uh, but so to answer the question, because it becomes how – how is that number conceivable? How is that breakdown? Like, how is that possible? Because I still now myself am kind of, as I mentioned, blown away by it. Uh, so how it happened, the kind of the little backstory, this is kind of the shortcut in terms of how I was able to hit those kind of numbers, is for about five years, I had a printed publication. Right. So similar to Success Magazine, 
but it was uh, more of a, a newsprint. And for that publication, again, it was monthly, did it for close to six years, and the publication was give or take 30-some pages, and to fill that it would not be abnormal for me to do 80 interviews in a month. Right. To put together the articles, the content, we'd, we would even just interview somebody just to get quotes for the paper. Wow. Uh, so I had that paper, and then I had a previous paper, and I will say that probably about fairly close to 3,000 of those interviews was a result of those publications. Wow. So... So I say this because sometimes when people hear I have a show now, they think, oh, wow, you've done, you know, 4,000 or 5,000 on the show. It hasn't been all through the show. It's been interviews through all walks of life. But they have been one-on-one -on -one interviews. They've all been, like, it hasn't been like me interviewing 100 people at once. They have been all one-on-one -on -one interviews. Uh, they've been with almost, you know, thought leaders from almost every walk of life you can think of. And then the, it, since I started the radio show five years ago, that's where the other numbers started to come in. Uh, but in terms of how it all started, where really the rubber hit the road was in 2010, and I'd already had the newspaper and was doing interviews then, but I made a list of 100 of what I'll call the top, you know, the top, I don't want to say the, the top leaders ever, but some of the most renowned household name leaders right. that people know of. Yeah. I made this list and said, I want to get in front of these people. I want to get time with these people. And I basically set out to try to reach the people on this list. And for a point of reference, whether you go from a U.S. or Canadian side of things, it would be everybody from Olympians to somebody like Jack Canfield, the Chicken Soup for the Soul co-creator, yeah. yeah. uh, to John Gray, the Men Are From Mars uh, guy, uh, to John Lee Dumas, you know, we mentioned a minute ago. Yeah. Um, and you can go on and on. But the point is, uh, thought leaders from all walks of life, a lot of top authors, which end up, you know, being a lot of the most well-known people. Tony Horton, as well, the P90X dude. Yeah. Um, so basically, I built this list of 100 people, and I set out to interview them. And here's the interesting part. I asked friends and colleagues and other associates, how many of this 100 do you think I'll reach? And they took a look at the list, and they realized that I was in over my head and said, <laughs> I think the biggest number I got was like 20 out of 100. Wow. I, I'm proud to say, and this is not a me ink thing, but I'm proud to say at the end of a little over a year, I'm going to knock on wood so that it helps me in the future. Uh, I had secured 93 interviews wow. out of the 100. Interesting part about the fact that the other five were almost impossible. Since that time, uh, I found out three of the five don't do interviews with anybody. And so there was only two left. One of them was Seth Godin, who you may know the name of. So yeah, the purple yeah, cow. And, yeah. and the other one was Guy Kawasaki. Yeah. who wrote The Art of Start. And, and mm -hmm. so since that time, I've interviewed Guy. I haven't interviewed Seth. He's the only holdout of the people that actually do interviews. But that's what really kicked it into overdrive. Because once I saw what was possible when I started reaching out, then I wanted more of that. And I became mm -hmm. obsessed with what I was learning. So but it's a two-part answer of how it all went. One was I made that list, and then that sort of kicked it into overdrive. And the second part is I was already doing interviews through the publication, and I basically kept doing those at the same time. So it was like, how can I reach people that are the unreachables? You know, I would get told this person turns down nine out of every 10 interviews. Wow. And yet I was still pursuing it a year later. Yeah. And what, Jack Campfield was the guy, I remember they said, uh, he only does one out of every 10. And he, um, at the time, I went through like five people to try to schedule it. It took like 16 months. Wow. But... 16 months later, uh, the interview aired the day before he was on Oprah on the OWN Network and the day after he was on uh, Larry King Live. That's and in between, he was on my in my tiny little publication and on my tiny little show. So, I mean, it's an example of what can happen, but I won't say I had any special skill or any unique, uh, at the time especially, any unique hack or trick way to do it because, you know, here I was almost two years. Basically, the one trick I had is the hustle. I wouldn't give up. I really just felt... It's going to happen, and the only reason it won't is if I quit on it. So that I don't know if that answers the question, but that's the two-part direction is, one, I got the interviews because I had the publication that forced me to kind of do them, and two, when it really kicked into overdrive was whenever I built that list and then became obsessed by reaching everybody on the list. Yeah, yeah. I think that's an amazing answer, uh, and it just illustrates the, the power of – you know, being consistent. And uh, to me, what really stands out is the fact that you got all those amazing interviews uh, simply because you didn't give up and simply because you wanted to, right? Well, here's another thing too. If there's a life lesson that came out of it, uh, for me at least, it, it actually is in the fact that I didn't get all 100. Mm. So the life lesson, uh, if, I mentioned Jack Canfield. 
one of the things that really spoke out to me that Jack shared with us, and I'd heard this in his story before, but his first year when he kind of went into business for himself, he was a teacher, I believe, at the time, and him and his wife wrote a check to themselves for $100,000. Yeah. And yeah. they basically said, this is our target for the year. Mm. The year that they wrote the check, that full year, they had made 8000 mm. So writing a check and saying, we're going to do 100000 in the year, is that's 10 times in your income. It's astronomical. And so he wrote that check, and at the end of the year that he planned to hit 100000 he hit ninety three. Wow. Now, the interesting thing that came out of that, though, is mm -hmm. most people said, Jack, oh, sorry, buddy. I'm so sorry you didn't reach your goal. <laughs> and everybody kind of felt bad for him. And he said, I don't understand this. I 10 times my income mm. because I aimed for the for the stars. Yeah. And people are actually feeling sorry for me because I didn't hit my goal, not realizing had I not set a goal that was that high anyway, I might have only done 10,000 that year. And so for me, the takeaway is the fact that I set that list of 100 yeah. and hit 93, which is kind of, I never noticed that before. The, the nice synergy there with Jack, $100,000 and, and made 93. I set a goal of 100 and ultimately interviewed 93. <laughs> I think I, it's 94 now because of Guy Kawasaki. Yeah. But anyway, the point is, is that the lesson there was people even said to me, oh, you didn't hit your goal, eh? Not realizing I just interviewed 93 of the people that I should have never probably had the right to get in front of. These are people charging sometimes $80,000 for a 45 minute keynote talk. Wow. And I'm sitting in front of them for an hour mm. and I'm able to ask them one-on-one -on -one questions. Whereas in a keynote, you have to just listen to what they share. Yeah. So yeah. I have more access to them yeah. and it costs me nothing simply because I wouldn't give up. So I, uh, the lesson is if you, again, if you aim high, mm. even if you fall short, you're still further than the person that didn't aim high in the first place. Awesome. Awesome. I love it. I absolutely love it. Right, Corey. No, that's a, that's that's a brilliant answer, and um, I think you you're absolutely right. When you just don't give up and you carry on, you know, pursuing the the path that you that that you're so passionate about, you just keep putting one foot in front of the other. There's no reason why you wouldn't reach the the summit eventually. It will take time. It'll take effort, and you might have some stumbles along the way, but you will absolutely reach the summit. So, no, that's a brilliant story. I do want to, however, ask you uh, just how how long did it take to actually get that many interviews done? Like, what was the timeline like? So there were definitely breaks in between, and I yeah. say that because I mentioned I had an earlier newspaper, yeah, and then I, I and I there was like a five year at least break between those two. So if I go back to when it started. Uh, I'm going to say it started in 96, so 1996, yeah. and then I took a break after about two years, and then I jumped back in in 2005, and I'm still building now today. So that, that number is still building. So if I get realistic, I would say the bulk of that happened from about 2007 to today, so about 10 years. Yeah. That's when the bulk of it happened. Awesome. Awesome. That's great. Um yeah, that that's that's a that's a mind-boggling number. So yeah, I uh, obviously it, it wouldn't have taken you you know uh, like a few months or a few weeks. It would have taken you a little bit longer. So uh, yeah, that kind of makes sense. But still, an absolutely mind-boggling number. Um, I do want to kind of just point out to the people who are watching this, like you know, seriously, you might be sitting there and thinking, wow, you know, a, a, a household top uh, name, you know how do I reach out to them? You know, I, I'm not somebody who is well connected. I'm not somebody who has any sort of influence. Uh, but, you know, Corey is, is saying that he didn't necessarily have any, you know, uh, high level skills at that point. And, and he didn't have a, a world class network at that point. But he did have that passion. He did have that drive. And all he did was, you know, try and keep going, not give up. Uh, you know, like he mentioned, like that interview with Jack Canfield took him 16 months to arrange and and that for most people would be the point where they give up but Corey just kept going so that shows you the power of consistency Corey thank you so much for sharing that I'm just actually wondering um, you know if, if obviously you don't mind sharing with us what what was your exact strategy to actually reach out to these like super high-level people that you know 
nobody has access to them. Nobody even knows how to get access to them. So what what was your actual strategy like? Because I think a lot of the people who are actually watching this right now, they're probably in a mindset that, wow, you know, who am I to reach out to somebody like that? Why would they talk to me? Uh, why would they Why would they actually want to start a conversation with me? What do I have to offer them? So I'm just wondering, what, what was it for you at that time to actually reach out to them and, uh, you know, start to make that connection and build a relationship? So here's the interesting part. It, it wasn't a, uh, and I've thought about putting it together as a, as a strategy and, and a, as a program, like a building, the, putting together the whole strategy, yeah. but I haven't really ever formalized it. So I'll tell you kind of the, the scattered strategy because it was all over the place. <laughs> and I say right. that because it's a different answer depending on the achiever you're talking about. Mm. So as a, for instance, so, and Jack is a great example. I get people all the time saying, Hey, do, can you give me Jack's number? You know, like just <laughs> wanting to jump the queue and, the second you do something like that, you betray a trust, right? I mean, yeah, yeah. and I say that, I mean, there's nothing wrong with somebody saying, connect me via email. And mm -hmm. if I have an email, I can, but it's a whole different thing to say, hey, can you give me somebody's number so I can text them? Yeah. Um, but here's what I would say. So for me, it depends on the uh, the person. So with Jack, it literally, at the, and I don't even know if you can do this anymore because we're going back now four <laughs> years. Yeah. But how I did it then was I actually went to his website and I, I went, and I can't remember the terminology, but basically I went to the sales section because I know the salespeople always want to talk to you because yeah. he has a whole, I mean, he has 100 plus staff members. Yeah. So essentially what I did was I went to the sales section, I reached out that way, and I said, you know, I'm not sure who I should be speaking to. I explained it. I wasn't hiding anything. I explained what I was looking for, and I said, I thought maybe I could come to you on the sales side and, and ask you. I know I'm in sales, and I know I usually know a lot about the company I'm with. And so I said, do you know who I could reach out to? And then they basically said, Here's who I'd reach out to. Here's her email. And then I reached out to her. And then she said, well, I'm not the person. And then it kind of continued from there. And then then it, I got, after enough time going through the different people involved, I finally got to that right person. And then it became a thing of, well, he's not taking interviews right now because he's working on, the, I think at the time, he was rewriting the success principles. He was putting right. out the anniversary edition. And so it was just a timing thing, which, by the way, interestingly enough, about a year ago, which, you know, when you watch it, you're like, oh, after all the work I did, I noticed <laughs> that Jack actually was taking a lot of interviews, uh, like, about a year ago, because he re-released the book. So here's a, here's a little hack. So I'm going I'm to continue into this uh, for a second as well to give you more, because that was just one person and one strategy. Uh, but I will say, here's a big hack. If you notice, whether you listen to them on shows, whether you see it on Twitter, I mean, you can just simply follow them on social media and find this out. Yeah. But when you see they're doing a tour a thought leader, when you see they're releasing a book, when you see they have a new program coming out, that, that's when you need to get on the radar. Um, ideally, before, if you have insight that they're going to release it, but at <laughs> least when they're releasing it, because that's when they have the core set up, and that's when they do media. Yeah. Typically speaking, just like actors who have a new movie out, you see them on the media like crazy when a movie's coming out, and then they sort of disappear. Mm. So here's the first hack. If you want to know how to get in touch with them, and the key thing is, and I'm going to explain, this is the second part, you need to have a benefit for them. You need to have a what's in it for them. So if you want to get them on your show or whatever that might be, watch when they're releasing a book or they have a new product out. That's your best chance of reaching them because the what's in it for them is they're trying to get the message out to as many people as they can. Yeah. So the secondary part is then you have to have a benefit for them. So in your case or my case, we have shows. To be honest, probably the best move I ever made for reaching a lot of these thought leaders was launching my publication and then launching a radio show. Mm. Because now all of a sudden you have a what's in it for them. Yeah. You can say, here's what's in it for you. And then what I did from there was then I had to craft my reach out that showed them, here's why it's about you and not about me. Mm. You know, it's not because I want to get you on my show, even not because I want to get you for my listeners. It's because I noticed you're about to re-release such and such a book and I want to get that message out to as many people as I can and wave the flag for you as far as I can. Yeah. Yeah. So it's wording as well. So it's got to be worded. What's in it for them? You got to think about what's the timeline for them. Mm -hmm. uh, look on their website and see if there's a contact info. But here's another way that I did it is I actually would do searches based on their name and their website. So I would kind of go like use a weird example. Let's say it was johnsmith.com yeah. and John Smith was a household name. I might go john at johnsmith.com. If that didn't work and let's say uh, I might go jsmith at johnsmith.com. Mm. And I would do searches, and I would either come up with their email address, or I would come up with their assistant or publicist's email address. Yeah. So that's another way I did it. So right. really, it became creative ways to search them online, mm. and 
then reach out with a what's in it for them or a benefit to them yeah. and paying attention to the fact that they are on tour or they are, do have a book out mm-hmm. because then you can say, I notice you're releasing your new book. I'd love to be able to help you share the message and get it in front of people so you can impact lives. Yeah. Make it about them. Yeah. So that's maybe a quick five minute version, but obviously as you can probably imagine, I had to get really creative. So the, the, it goes way beyond that. It, it could be me sending them in a book in the mail and saying, just thought you might enjoy this book. Mm. So you have to constantly thinking about how can I add value to their life? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, you know what? I absolutely love that answer. That's so perfect. Literally, I, I, that like absolute gold, absolute gold there. So yeah, definitely. Um, everybody who's watching this, what Corey just shared with you uh, is the exact strategy that he used to get in front of you know, all the people that he managed to get in front of and, and interview. And these are between four to 5,000, you know, top, top leaders. And uh, guess what? You know, everything that he has shared, s- some of those strategies are actually something that I have used personally to bring on guests on this YouTube channel because guess what? You know, it's not easy to get somebody onto, uh, you know, your YouTube channel uh, and, and give, you know, basically the most... The, the most precious resource, which is their time, because for people who uh, you know are at the at the top of their game, um, they their most resource, precious resource is their time, because they're so busy with everything that's going on in their life. Um, and those strategies are absolutely perfect. Like you have to be more interested in them than trying to be interesting. You have to really come from a place of value and and give something back to them and try and add value to them. Uh, so you know just. Everything you shared was absolute gold, and I just wanted to highlight that for everybody who's watching this. So I'll add one other thing in that just popped into my mind that I think is valuable as well. Okay. And this is thinking about, you know, for what I shared with you is for that person who's, like you said, like I was, and, and like you said, is sitting there going, well, I don't have those contacts. I don't have those influencers. I don't have this the resources that somebody has. Well, I didn't either. I mean, you heard where I started. I built this list of 100. I hadn't interviewed any of them when I started. I know one thing, if I wouldn't have put 100 on that list, I wouldn't have gotten to 100 or near 100. You know, if I would have made, if I wouldn't have made a list, I would have been at zero. So first of all, it starts with taking action. But here's another, I guess, a couple of little tips, if you will. Uh, One, and this still works, even if you're starting and you don't have the names yet. So I'll give you an example of a one-two punch. And and I'm not trying to... uh, Give Jack Campbell a whole bunch of uh, a bunch of PR today, but <laughs> this really relates to how I got Jack because he was he was a really big name at the time. Mm. Uh, I mean, he's still he's a huge name, he's a household name, but it was a really big get when I got that interview. But here's how it actually played out. I just remembered how it went down. So uh, Dan Sullivan is a guy who runs a company called Strategic Coach. Now Dan is not. Uh, he doesn't have the same household name, let's say, that Mark Victor Hansen or Jack Canfield has, yeah. but they're his, they're his clients. He mm-hmm. coaches them. They go to his uh, his conference that he has every year. So here's what happened. Dan Sullivan, I heard him on the CD, Inside Success Magazine, being interviewed by Darren Hardy. Yeah. And so I knew from something that Dan had said on his website that he really enjoyed that interview. And so I reached out to his team, and I mentioned I heard him on Success uh, our publication and our radio show is very similar to Success Magazine. Right. I'd love to share his story in a similar way. So mm. his staff CC'd him in, and he said, I loved the Success Magazine interview. I'd love to do one like that. So Dan came on my show, and and I, I was able to use, and this is a big thing too, uh, the way you brand yourself. So once Dan was on the show and he said something positive about me publicly, yeah. then that goes into my bio, mm. and people see Dan's name, and it adds credibility. So then you start adding these names like Jack and Shailene Johnson and Dan, and then you get you get extra crachet or credit. Yeah, but yeah. here's what happened. In the interview, when he mentioned Jack and, and, and um, Mark, uh, he basically said that they go – and you can hear this right in the interview, by the way. He said that they go to his conference, et cetera, et cetera. And so I said, you know, I love Jack's story. I love when he did this. And, and so I started asking about Jack a bit and showing interest in Jack, which yeah. is his client. Yeah. And so Dan said – dude, you need to have Jack on the show. <laughs> and so here's what I did. I remember the other thing I did. So I mentioned it took 16 months. When it finally happened, what I did was I sent the audio clip mm-hmm. of Dan saying, you need to get Jack on the show. Yeah. So think about that. Jack goes to Dan because Dan's one of those amazing coaches. Yeah. And now he hears Dan saying, hey, Jack would be a perfect fit in your show. Mm. Yeah. So I sent that to his staff and then I assume Jack's staff sent it on to Jack. Yeah. And so... That's what happened there, but the point is, is that um, we don't realize it, but it's not it's not as many degrees away. We're not as many degrees away mm. from the top leaders and influencers as we think. 
I, I think most people are probably three away. And once you start getting obsessed by interviews like me, then you get one degree away. I think the most powerful thing there really is the fact that you came from a place of value or being authentic. You were generally, you know, trying to give value to Jack. Uh, and uh, you were you were not somebody who was trying to you know take his time or take something from him um, because obviously that 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 would automatically put up barriers. So I think you're absolutely right. There's actually a concept which uh, talks about the six degrees of separation, like you know between you and anyone else in the world. There's only six degrees of separation. What what's your take on that? So I I now it based on. What I've discovered after all these interviews, yeah. I have to say that it's a hundred thousand percent true. <laughs> you know, I think I think it started with the whole thing like six degrees of Kevin Bacon. People said that Kevin Bacon is connected to every single actor in Hollywood by less than six degrees, um, and more of a joking thing. But the six degrees of separation, um, you know, is is built around the same premise. Mm. And so my answer would be yes, I believe it's a hundred percent true. And like I said, I know now that I'm probably because of the interviews, I'm probably one degree away. Yeah. And, you know, I started I started maybe six or who knows, right, maybe 20 degrees away from certain ones. Mm. But I do believe in the idea that we're probably if we dig deep enough, we either are or can be six degrees away from anyone. But again, um, the more we reach out to people, the more relationships we build, the closer we get to that two and three degrees and then eventually one degree. Wow. That's powerful. It's it's crazy to think like, you know, if, if you interview, uh, if you think about the one degree, if you interview somebody like, um, I think I'm trying to think of an example, but let's say I interviewed Jake, the snake Roberts, if you know, Jake, the snake the wrestler, Jake, uh, yeah. you know, he's, he Jake, the snake carried the snake around to the wrestling ring. So think about, uh, Jake has spent time with the rock stone Cold Steve Austin, yeah. Hulk Hogan. Yeah. So technically just, you know, by interviewing Jake, you're now one degree away from pretty much every wrestler that was that we watched in the 80s or heard of in the 80s. Yeah. So yeah. it doesn't take much to be one degree away. That, that's, yeah, that's, uh, that's very true and very powerful, actually. Um, it, it makes a lot of sense. And people, again, who are watching this and thinking, they, you know, sitting there thinking, uh, you know, how do I reach out to all these people and, you know, how long it will take and, you know, how much effort is required and how do I even go about starting, you know, the whole business? Well, Corey has just literally opened the whole book uh, you know, to you, and I hope you guys have been taking notes because he's been dropping absolute gold. Um, and uh, everything that he has said, it's just so powerful, so true. And uh, I, I really encourage you guys to go ahead and take action. Okay, find out for yourself. If you're sitting there curious about this, you know what? Go ahead, take action, and find out for yourself. Because you know what, Corey's absolutely right. Every single time you connect to a new person, their whole network opens up to you. And that removes so many different degrees of separation that you had before, simply because you connected with that one person. And right now, if you're watching this and any of this resonated with you, I would encourage you to go out and reach out to Corey, okay? Um, I'm sure Corey will be able to share some of his contact details with us on how we can contact him, which I'll put, uh, put below in the description so you can directly just click on the link and go straight on to how to connect with Corey. Um, and uh, I really encourage you guys to go and start a conversation with Corey. Here's somebody who's been there, done that, and he has explored the minds of between four to 5,000 you know, top leaders. Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you want to be somebody who is on Corey's radar, who's having a conversation with Corey. So go ahead and make sure you take action. Oh, thank you. Thank you ever so much. And I will add too, because I think this is an important note, is that I, I can't ever promise what will happen in the future. But what I can <laughs> tell you now is I'm very easily accessible online. And I say that, I mean, I'm still answering the social media. I'm still doing that stuff. And, you know, a lot of the, a lot of thought leaders just can't it's not possible mm. um meaning just because of their schedule you know a thought leader has 100 employees there's a reason why right and they just can't they're not on facebook uh, thankfully I, I guess i can say i'm lucky that i'm still where i can do that yeah. uh, so if you're listening now reach out to me while it's still possible because <laughs> you know like everybody there's going to be a point where um i've been i've been fighting it as long as i can mm. and there gets to be a critical mass where you it's just impossible because like i'm speaking on the road 200 days a year yeah, um, yeah. So it gets wow. to be a point where you're just not online as much. Mm. 
Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, you know, that that's how I actually connected with you, right? Like I reached out to you um, and uh, said, hey, Corey, you know, this is who I am and this is what I'm up to and I'd love to have you on the show. And, uh, you know, I don't know if I actually told you that the, the actual... Um, kind of platform where I actually first came across you was the one thing podcast. I'm a, I'm a long time listener of the one thing podcast. Um, I'm also a, a big fan of uh, Jeff Woods who started the mentee podcast and I've been following the mentee podcast, you know, right from the start, I've been following Jeff's journey. Um, and that's where I actually first kind of came across you. And then obviously I, I was just blown away by your story and, and, uh, you know, how you actually, you know, managed to accomplish all this. And I wanted to really, you know, get you on the show so you can share your story and your journey with, with the people out there. And, uh, you know, again, I just want to say thank you so much for taking the time. It's, uh, it's really amazing. And, um, you know, everything that you have shared with us is absolute gold. And I really hope that people who are watching this go ahead and take action on it. Thank you so much. And like I said, this is truly my purpose. This is what I, I love doing. I'm passionate about. So first of all, thank you for taking the initiative to reach out. <laughs> and it goes back to that idea. If we don't take action, nothing happens, right? Yeah. Um, the one thing I'm a huge fan, just you mentioned them and gave them a couple of plugs. I'll give them a plug. <laughs> huge fan of the book. Huge yeah. fan of the show. Yeah. Uh, that book is a game changer. It's There's not many books that come along that you can say this book can change a life. Mm. That is one of those books. Oh, yeah. um, so the book itself, the podcast, mm. yeah, love it. It's absolute gold. And uh, and yeah, so thank you so much for reaching out. Thank you for helping me uh, speak to your audience. And, uh, and yeah, I'd love it if people wanted to reach out with me, connect and tell me how I can uh, help them in the future as well. Yeah, no, I, I really hope people do that. Um, Corey, I'm, I'm going to try and pull this in a different direction now. Um, I'm, I'm just curious. Obviously, you've had between 4,000 to 5,000 different interviews uh, with, with different people. I'm wondering what was the most memorable moment uh, or, or the most memorable interview that you had and uh, who was it with? <laughs> so this is interesting because it was memorable for two reasons. Right. One, I still pull nuggets out of it and I still share those nuggets and I probably share as much from this interview with this individual as any interview I've done in terms of life lessons. Yeah. At the same time, it was memorable for a totally different reason. So the name, you may or may not um, recognize uh, the name uh, Robin Sharma. I don't know if you're familiar with his work. Um, I'm, I don't think I'm familiar with Robin Sharma, but I, I'll, I'll definitely look, look into him. Okay, so he, he's written about 11 international bestsellers. Uh, wow. One of them is called the, the Monk Who Sold His Ferrari which okay. sold 5 million plus copies. Wow. Uh, so Robin, uh, we had him on, We I interviewed him, and at the time I had a toothache. But I didn't right. want to tell him because I was scared the interview would get canceled and it took a long time to get. So I did this whole interview with a toothache. Wow. But one thing I learned during that timeline when I had the toothache is that drinking water helps soothe it, but mm. only as long as you're drinking the water. So you have this excruciating pain, and when you drink the water, it alleviates it. But the problem with that, if you're doing an hour-long interview... Is now you're filled up with water. <laughs> you need to go to the bathroom. You can't say that, and you still have a toothache. So it was memorable because it was such a unique situation. Yeah. But then at the same time, it was memorable for another reason, which is that even despite all that was going on, mm. he had me fully in in the moment because the interview was so powerful. I mean, he dropped. You mentioned gold. He dropped knowledge bomb or gold at every second. I mean, it was just like you almost couldn't separate. You know, sometimes you do an interview and you can say, okay, this is the stuff that I'm going to use and share forever. This is the stuff that was amazing, mm. but it'll be just something that people hear when they come across it. His his interview was like, I can't take out anything. Like, There's nothing I can take out, whether it's editing it out or not using it in the future. It was just all gold. Oh, so wow. it was memorable from two perspectives. Wow. That's... Uh... That, that's as as hilarious as that is, it's, um, it's also really powerful, the fact that, you know, um, it was such an engaging interview where it kept you in the moment all the time and, and you were, you know, just getting knowledge bombs dropped on you every single moment. Um, and I know that, that that kind of thing just absolutely pulls you in and it, and it just fuels the fire and, and you want to go in and, you know, want more of those moments because those moments are really you know, precious, but fleeting at the same time. So I can absolutely relate to that because there's so many times that I'm with the guest and we're talking and I'm just like, you know what? I, I know we only have an hour, but you know, do you think it'll be okay if I just carry on for a bit longer? So yeah, I can totally relate to that. Awesome. Awesome. Right. Yeah, and Sorry. I'll, and no worries at all. Um, maybe if you're okay with it, I'll add one little second one. Um, I won't take as long, but I'll, uh, I'll tell you another memorable moment that just, 
sort of dropped, you know, popped into my head. Cause I always think as a speaker, I sh- obviously I share a lot of these fleeting moments mm. with audiences. And uh, one of the other ones that always stuck with me was I was interviewing a guy named Patrick Henry Hughes right. and Patrick was born with no eyes. Uh, he can't bend his arms and legs fully, but yet he's a classically trained pianist. He's open for uh, Lone Star. He's played the Grand Old Opry. Uh, he has, I think, two best-selling books. He's been on Oprah and Ellen. Wow. And so he's achieved a lot. He speaks, actually. He mm-hmm. does the speaking circuit. His father works at UPS and used to uh, run with him during the day in, in marathons and stuff. And he pushed him around. Uh, he was in the Louisville marching band. So his father pushed him in the band and did all that during the day and then went, worked all night for UPS. Wow. Uh, so they just had this magical story. Mm-hmm. So the very first question I asked Patrick his answer set me back, and, and there was like the longest pause I've ever had after a question in my life mm-hmm. when he gave his answer. Wow. So what I said was, was it really hard growing up with such a disability mm. in terms of trying to achieve what you've achieved? Yeah. And he said, let me stop you right there, Corey. Mm. I wasn't born with a disability. Mm-hmm. I was born with an ability. Mm-hmm. And so I didn't know what he meant, but I knew it was big. So I, said, I got goosebumps, and I said, what do you mean you were born mm-hmm. with an ability? He yeah. said, well, people that have their eyesight – they mostly judge people by what they see, mm-hmm. by you know how much money they seem to have, by what clothes they wear, by you know whatever it is. They judge them by various things. He said, "I don't have that ability because I can't see them. So all I can judge is the person inside." Wow, that's that's so powerful. I, I just it, I, it just, stopped I, my track. I got goosebumps right now. I just as you mentioned it just now, I got goosebumps myself. That's amazing. Wow, that is that is powerful. That is and really it probably powerful. it probably explains why he's achieved at the highest level. Mm-hmm. Because if he sees it as having an ability where 90% of the world would probably see it as a disability, yeah, that explains yeah. his glass is half full or maybe more than half full. Or you know what? Who cares about the glass? Let's just find another bottle, another bottle of water to pour in it. You know, he's <laughs> taking a very positive view. And I believe firmly that his mindset is probably what's been most responsible for all that success. Yeah. I chimed yeah. off at first. So anyway, that was another memorable moment. Yeah, yeah, no, that's uh, that's that's really powerful. That is really really powerful, and and definitely a memorable moment for for you. I, I I'm I'm sure it is. Um, but I just want to dig a little bit deeper there because obviously you, you touched upon mindset. So what do you think is the actual connection between mindset and somebody's level of success? I think it's almost everything. You know, it's there's other variables I've seen. Uh, so if we talk about uh, common traits, I call them timeless secrets that I've discovered during these interviews. Yeah. Um, one of them is passion. So these high mm-hmm. achievers are living on purpose. They, they, they know what their passion is. And I think that's mindset, even though it's not mindset when, you know, when we talk about attitude and the way we view things and uh, do we carry negative or positive energy and all that kind of stuff. I still think it, it, it relates to our mindset. Once we find our passion, it changes our mindset. Yeah. Um, so that's one thing that relates to mindset. Mm-hmm. But the other side is I've noticed that the people that have a way of whether they see the glass is half full or not. They have a way of refilling the glass. Mm. Those are the people, and that's a metaphor, but it's really you know those people that you see that figure out how to surround themselves with positive people and get some of the negative people out of their life. Yeah, you know, I, yeah. I I provide exercises for that because I believe a lot of people that are negative minded mm. are surrounded by negative people, and and they read the newspaper and they start at the front cover with the negative news, and they don't realize how all those inputs are affecting their mindset. Mm. So my answer, I guess, is I think mindset's everything. But the great news is I think there's very practical. And not even that hard, but very practical strategies for adjusting your mindset. And I think it's sad that a lot of people either don't know about those mm. or haven't had the opportunity to impl- you know, apply those. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But it is everything. It is everything. Yeah, no, that is really powerful. And I completely agree uh, with what you said in, in terms of, um, you know, not just the mind, the connection between mindset and success, but also, you know, the power of surrounding yourself with the right people. And, uh, you know, I, I talk about it all the time on the show with uh, with the viewers to tell them about, you know, how they need to surround themselves with the right people. And, you know, here we have Corey, who's actually interviewed the top 4,000 to 5,000 top leaders, and he's saying the same thing. So, you know, it's not just something I'm making up, by the way, guys, it's not just me you know you know sitting down at night and writing a few notes to say to you guys on on the next show it's literally you know this these are the actual common practices uh of the of the really really high successful uh achievers of this world so yeah thank you for sharing that Corey. that was uh that was really powerful as well um yeah and if, you know i'm sorry i don't mean to interject again but i want to go for it i want to share one other variable too because sure. this is important and, and i i add this in because again it, i'm always trying to think of the viewer or listener going yeah, well, that sounds great for him, 
But really, where is he drawing that from? Is he always had a positive mindset? And mm. just if, if I got to add in that it wasn't until my mid 20s when I found my passion. Mm. And until that point, I was uh, for about four years, I battled hypochondria and generalized anxiety. And for those not like, w- watching or listening that haven't heard of those, anxiety, I'm sure we've all, we all won't know what that is, but generalized anxiety means it doesn't go away easily. Yeah. Uh, it's almost like having a major depression, but anxiety is a different thing, but it's like it never, it doesn't go away until you find a solution yep. or until something changes. Yep. Well, hypochondria, which is what mine morphed into, basically means every time I read about the symptoms of a disease, I developed them. Why do I bring that all up? It's because when I discovered my passion, hmm. All of a sudden, it was the first time in about five or four years where the, the this fog lifted, and all of a sudden, I seen the world in a different way. So why I bring that up is because I discovered that you can't be fully positive in mindset and also be a hypochondriac, because yeah. a hypochondriac thinks doom and gloom all the time, and a positive person doesn't think doom and gloom very often. Yeah. So I bring this up to you know the viewer and listener, and I, I interjected because I felt it was important enough to say that you don't have to start this way. You can change your mindset. And I'm somebody who went from one to the other. And if you took people that knew me before my mid-20s, they would never expect it to be the same energy and positivity that I have today because they've seen who I was before. So I just had, I just had to add that in. <laughs> no, that's absolutely fine. And, you know, it, it, the passion is literally, it just radiates out of you, okay? Um, you know, all this time that I've been talking to you, it's been jumping out of the screen and punching me in the face. So, you know, I'm sure it's very visible to everybody else who's watching this as well, that you're really passionate about this. And this is kind of like your calling, right? This is kind of like you're following a calling and you found your calling and you've been pursuing it and you just get more and more energy. You get more and more enthusiasm as you go down that road. Um, uh, and it's true, you know, once you find that passion, when you find that, you know, the, your calling as it is, you know, for your life, then definitely you, you get that energy uh, and, and you get that enthusiasm and then you go ahead and, and that that's part of creating extraordinary results in your life. That's how I actually go ahead and, and create those results because you have this fuel, that fire that just doesn't die and, and you have to go and, you know, um, pursue your passion until, you know, like something happens either your heart stops beating or the world ends or something like that otherwise you're just gonna keep going so yes i, I cory you know that's uh, that was again really really powerful and it, it i mean your passion is just so visible it's, it's it's great the energy is so amazing um i think everybody who's been watching this they, they're probably sitting there and, and they're feeding off that energy because i know i am oh thank you so much i really appreciate it <laughs> No, it's absolutely true, my friend. Um, I wanted to quickly uh, just touch upon uh, one thing. I know you uh, had that great interview on the One Thing podcast, and there you talk about the the timeless secrets of these, uh, you know, top successful leaders that you have interviewed. Um, I'm wondering if you don't mind just expanding on that a little bit here and uh, talking to us about what is a what were those you know common habits and practices that these top leaders had. Yeah, I'm happy to do so. And uh, in fact, you know, I was mentioning the the new book and and part of when I was bringing that together, I mean, if if you look at the front cover, it says, discover the timeless secrets to meaning, success and abundance. And the reason I... I, Can we see that again, actually? Do you mind just showing us the... Yeah, yeah, no problem. Yeah. Okay, see if I can get it in there. Yeah, yeah. And and then right there, it says, discover the timeless secrets. Yeah. Right there. Um, So basically... Part of the, the reason that I had this desire to bring this book together is I wanted to share this stuff. Mm. And so, um, so yeah, I can, I can sort of rhyme a few of them off. One of them I already shared with you, which is the passion and purpose. So that's a big one is that these thought leaders have discovered it and they're living it. And so and maybe that's a big part of why it was so important to me to tap into my passion. You know, I started seeing that these thought leaders all had this in common. Um, but some other ones that I haven't shared yet – one relates to the one thing, really. Uh, it's not about the one thing, but it's indirectly related. And it's that they discovered the power of no. So these thought leaders that seem to crush it at the highest level, here's the difference. What I've discovered is that most people say yes to everything and then try to figure out how to do it. Yeah. The top, uh, the, you know, the, and, and I'm not trying to say uh, that person that does that is, can't be a top thought leader. It's just that they haven't been, they haven't been shown this. Because I grew up in a small town mm. and I was taught to say yes to everything. So I, I know It's not easy. And it was hard to beat that out of me. But when I started noticing is that these thought leaders, they all said um, no to everything that wouldn't move the needle forward so they could say yes to the few things that would move the needle forward. So what they do differently is they have a really good knowledge 
of what to say no to and what to say yes to. And usually what they do is say no to almost everything. And then all of a sudden you can see obviously what the yeses are once you said no to everything else. Uh, so they're really good at saying no. And basically how that relates to the one thing is they say no to a whole bunch of things so they can focus on the one thing that's going to make the difference. Yeah. So that, that would be one of them. Uh, so another trait then. So, you know, we've talked about passion and purpose being one of the common traits. We talked about the power of no. Uh, you know, that's what I call it, the power of no, because I think it's so powerful. And I think a lot of people don't realize how important that is. And, and you can do that through, as you know, you've heard probably with the one thing, one of the area, one of ways is uh, time blocking. Yeah. You know, to actually mm-hmm. say, I'm going to focus on this right now and everything else is a no. You know, and an example, when you're writing a book, you have to do that. Uh, when you're even when you're in a launch mode, you know, there's a lot of I, I will say this is a common trait with thought leaders. I know when, when they're in launch mode and I'm reaching out to do an interview or whatever, um, a lot of them will say and especially even maybe before launch mode when they're writing a book like Brendan Bouchard. Um, I'm trying to line something up with Brendan Bouchard. Well, I, I seem to hit I've hit it last few times when he's in the middle of preparing the next book or something like that. Well, at that point, he's heads down. He's not going to do interviews. Yeah. Everything almost all is a no because he's tucked away doing the yeses. Yeah. Um, so not to belabor that, but that's a big one. Uh, I'll give you a, a third one that people can take and use. And this is that I've learned that lifelong learners are leaders. Mm. And so what do I mean by that? The people that continue to feed their mind when everybody else is long stopped feeding their mind are the ones that stay at and get to the top. And so a great example of this is I bring people on the show that are in their 70s that are top thought leaders and they're speaking to a million people a year or 500 or 400,000 and yet they're still going to other speaker seminars and sitting there at the back of the room taking notes. Wow. You know, they're still feeding their mind. Zig Ziglar. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know if you're familiar with the name Zig Ziglar. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay, so I interviewed, uh, I mean, it's the late Zig Ziglar, he passed away a few years ago, uh, but before his passing, about a year before, I interviewed uh, Zig, and, and we talked about this, and, you know, he was still, he was actually getting more uh, discriminated about what he spent his time on. He said, now I will only read something if it's true, or it's going to teach me something. Wow. So he was even getting more strict, but mm-hmm. he was still feeding his mind, even at, I think, at the time, uh, probably 81 or something like that, or 80 years old, yeah. he was still feeding his mind. Meanwhile, you know, he, he could be going out to uh, impact a million lives in a year, mm-hmm. and yet he's still watching the speaker before him, even though a lot of other people would just go, ah, I don't know, I, I don't have to see him, I'm already teaching this stuff. Yeah. But he was, a stu- I, I guess we could say it this way, he was a student of the game. Yeah. And I found that the top thought leaders, and this is the people that aren't thought leaders yet, but the ones that will become the top thought leaders, they understand the importance of being a student of the game, being a lifelong learner, and feeding your mind. And the really cool news now is you don't have to be a reader anymore. There's so many ways to learn, like this show here, like our show. You can feed your mind a lot easier than you ever could before. You don't have to be a reader. And I will say the one catch-22 is if you want to be really successful at this, you've got to be really good at figuring out how to become an efficient learner mm. so that you can weed out all the information that's going to use up all your time yeah. and just get to the gold and nuggets and wisdom that's going to move the needle. Because the new challenge we all have is how do we sift through all the stuff that's not going to help to get to the few little things that will. Yeah. So that's number three as a yeah. timeless trait. Awesome. Awesome. Well, thank you for sharing that. That was really, really powerful. Uh, and everything you, you mentioned there, I think it's, uh, it, it really resonated with me. Um, and I, I'm pretty sure it resonated with everybody else who's watching this as well. Um, you know, that you, you have to constantly feed your mind. You have to follow your passion. You have to be somebody who leverages the power of saying no. You are always focused on that one thing that actually produces the biggest results. Okay, um, and all those things combined together are, I, I, I think, uh, definitely will give people massive, massive uh, results in their life if they start to pursue them. So thank you for sharing that. That was really, really powerful. Oh, my pleasure. And I think we mentioned or I talked about Think and Grow Rich was a, a game changer book for me. And I say I think we talked about it off off air. Uh, yeah. But um, that book, for those who haven't read it, written by Napoleon Hill, 1936, he did similar to what I, I'm doing. But he did it, obviously, uh, he was interviewing some of the top thought leaders of his day. Yeah. And here's the interesting part. Most of what I've discovered, albeit it's a bit more modernized than what he discovered because we didn't have cell phones and stuff at the time. Yeah. A lot of what I discovered 
is very similar to what Napoleon Hill discovered in 1936. Mm. So this is why I've added in the word timeless. Yeah. And, yeah. and I call it secrets yeah. because the truth is like the law of attraction. You know, they called it the secret. The truth is people knew it all along. Mm. There's always going to be people that know it, but it's a secret because the majority aren't doing it. The majority, it's still a secret yeah. for the people who haven't figured it. So mm. that's just so you know where the timeless secrets came from. The yeah. timeless, as I realized, I'm reading Dale Carnegie and Napoleon Hill from the 30s, and what they're teaching is what I'm learning when I'm interviewing people today. So just yeah. as a food for thought, this stuff is fundamental. And in my opinion, if it's worked for almost 100 years, it'll work for another 100. Yeah, yeah. And, and the thing is, if it's worked for some of the top thought leaders in the world, then I'm sure it can work for anybody else as well. They just have to follow in those exact footsteps to get the, to the same destination and generate the same results for themselves that you know other people have managed to generate for themselves. And the great thing is, like you mentioned, like it's so easy to feed your mind you know today because uh, guess what you know you don't have to sit down and read a book you don't have to sit down and watch tv you can just listen to a podcast listen to an audio book you can uh, you know just play play something in the background as you're doing your chores around the house like there's so many ways now that you can feed your mind and constantly learn new things instead of you know the traditional ways of sitting down and reading a book or going to the library or you know sitting down and and watching a TV show etc there's so many different ways now so many different venues and also social media has opened up so many ways for people to go and build relationships and, and, and connect with other people and find out what's happening in their lives and, and leverage that so I think all of that like kind of really comes full circle uh, you know at this point and, and uh, I'm, I'm just really appreciative of the fact that you uh, you mentioned all those things I think they're really really powerful and uh, if people follow them they will definitely see results I you know I'll have to say that Thus far in my life, the results that I've seen from implementing these things that I'm learning from people, and you know, I, I didn't know them when I started, yeah. and I've lived them in the sense that I said, okay, I, I need to test this. Mm -hmm. Before I start sharing it, and before I even see if it's a common trait, let's test it and see if it works. And so I can say from firsthand experience that pretty much anything you'll ever hear me say come out of my mouth, I've tested it if I learned it from somebody else. And I wouldn't keep sharing it if it didn't work for me because I have to feel if it worked for me, and I'm as a speaker, I'll mm. I'll share it with people, and they'll send me messages saying I try, you know, I tried your hour of power that you shared, and and I'm doing it every day now, and here's the difference it's made in my life. Yeah. So I get to see from a wide range of people trying it, and then I'm trying it myself after I've heard it from these thought leaders, and the thought leaders are learning it, and they all have it in common. Yeah. So I've really, I, I guess we can say I've really time tested it, and I can say with a lot of confidence that almost anything, if you do it in the right way that I've shared, it will work for you. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, that's great. That's absolutely great. And and people are watching this again. Corey has tested it himself. So, you know, you can uh, you can definitely be confident that whatever he's shared with us today will work for you. Now, Corey, I'm, I'm very conscious of your time. Um, you know, uh, I I know you're a very, very busy person. But uh, if, if you don't mind, uh, we'll just like to take a few more minutes here and uh, just touch upon maybe your your actual speaking program and also your your book because i know you have just launched your book and uh, you are also opening the gates of your speaking program can you just maybe talk to us a little bit more about those two things yeah absolutely so the book itself depending at you know and i'll say this mr or mrs viewer when you're watching this <laughs> depending on when you're watching it uh the book i mean so here's what happened with the book we launched it with kickstarter yeah. uh, i mentioned jld earlier john lee dumas that me deciding to go with Kickstarter was a really big shift for me. I have other books I put out over the years. I've never done Kickstarter before. Mm. I watched what John did with his uh, book called The Freedom Journal. Loved what I saw. Uh, I knew other people had done it before, but his was the one I followed, and I actually was a backer of the project, and I, so I bought copies of the book. And so I said, I want to give that a try and see how it works for me. Yeah. So we launched with a Kickstarter. Um, I don't know the exact date offhand. I think it was November 3rd, and it ran until December 3rd. So, again, depending when you're watching this, that was our first part of the launch. And we did it almost like a pre-order, but at the same time, you were buying the book and you were ordering the book. The only catch was I had to hit our funded target with Kickstarter. Yeah. Uh, and I say this because people may not know about crowdfunding or Kickstarter. Uh, you have to hit your funded target, or it's all or nothing. If you don't hit your target, it doesn't go ahead. Well, we, we hit our target, so the book all done, ready to go. Mm. And so now we're in the process of actually, as I say this, uh, fulfilling all the rewards from the book. But depending on when you're listening to this, if, uh, if you're listening in January 2018 uh, or beyond, we're now going to be going into the second phase of the launch. And the second phase of the launch is Amazon. And once it gets on there, it's basically available 
ongoing. Like it's not, there's not going to be time when it's not. So we're in this little weird window where right now it's not available. So I'm not pitching you if you're seeing this before we've relaunched the book for sure. Um, but the book itself, we did a Kickstarter launch, had a lot of success. Now we're going to go with the Amazon launch, going to try to make the book a, a bestseller and go down that road. And so the book, why I put it out, as I mentioned, is I've learned these timeless secrets during the interviews. I want to, wanted to find another way to share them yeah. beyond from the stage, from my show, that type of thing. Uh, so the book itself is called The Book of Why and How. I know I showed the picture a couple times. Uh, basically, uh, it's broken down into three acts. So I took almost like the play approach. I, I called it three acts because I wanted you as the, the reader to progress. I wanted you to grow as you're reading it. So I, I took it like act one, act two, act three. Yeah. Act one is about finding your why. So we were talking about that earlier. It actually gives you exercises, helps you find your why. And then it goes into the why you should bother and what's in it for you and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Uh, sec act two or section two, depending on which terminology you want to use, is called thriving. That one uh, has the uh, timeless secrets. So what I was sharing here, some of those timeless secrets, yep. it has those and more. And I dive into, obviously, how you can implement them in your life. Awesome. Uh, act or section three is called enlightened. And this basically reveals how you can do all this stuff we're talking about in a more meaningful way. So it's not just about quote unquote, the almighty dollar or material or reaching this certain thought leader, you have more meaning when you're doing it. Mm. And then finally, which the part that really excites me is there's a bonus section with close to 400 quotes wow. by, well, I guess you could say 10% of the thought leaders I've interviewed, you 400 of the 4,000. Um, there's quotes by each of them. And the goal with those quotes is I wanted to select quotes that I felt just one of those quotes could change a life. If mm. I have 400 quotes that could all change a life, individually then my book has a really good chance of impacting somebody yeah. uh, individually mm -hmm. and so what we did in our facebook launch is we actually brought people on we actually interviewed them around their one quote and there's one quote that was like six words and we and we actually had to stop the interview because we were already past our half hour wow. so based on one like six words so my point is these quotes and we did prove this over and over again these quotes individually can change a life as long as a person's ready to receive them and they actually read into the quote and say how does this apply to my life so that's the book in a nutshell basically three sections and bonus quotes awesome and then uh, my speaking program it's much the same thing we're opening the doors the third week of january uh we've ha we've run the speaking program this will be our fourth time i believe we've opened the doors and essentially in a nutshell the easiest way i can explain this is basically we teach you the the speaking world and industry from your first day before you've ever even spoken on a stage all the way to how do you get paid whatever that number is eight or ten thousand dollars per talk wow. um more importantly how do you impact thousands of lives while you're doing it yeah and I say we go from there to there because you have some people that come in who already have the, uh, the, the how you speak down, but, and they've been speaking for five years, but they've never gotten paid. Yeah. And they're saying, Corey, I need to start monetizing this. Hmm. Some people will say, how can I use speaking to grow my business or launch a book or what have you? And so we basically want it to be the be all end all for anybody who wants to get into speaking and use it for whatever purpose, as long as the purpose is for good. <laughs> as long as they're using it for good, we want to teach them how to do that. So it's a, it's a, I'll call it an all-inclusive program. And a new element we've added this year is I'll call it a smaller tier because I keep getting questions of how do you secure and deliver a TEDx talk. And so I decided to add that element. So this year we're going to be adding uh, in the component of teaching people solely focused on TEDx talks. That's kind of like your beginning tier. So you can either go in the whole program yeah. or you might decide I just want to learn about the TEDx world. And, um, and so we have both options now. So that's the speaking program in a nutshell. Awesome, awesome. So, well, Corey, where can people go to actually find out uh, more about the, the actual speaking program? But also, maybe some people might want to reach out and directly, you know, get in touch with you, which I will highly encourage everybody to do so right now. So how can they do that? So a couple of different options. Uh, the speaking program, just go to thespeakingprogram.com. So yeah. it's real easy. We made it very easy. Thespeakingprogram.com. Uh, you can go there to learn about that. In, in a nutshell, that'll get you connected with me anyway, because uh, you'll be joining our tribe, but you'll get to access some free video training. Awesome. And then we'll let you know as soon as the program opens. Um, so that's one option. Another option would be just to search me online. Like if you want to, uh, you can go on Facebook and search my name. It's a pretty unique name, uh, unique spelling too. So it's Corey Poirier and it's a, an E in the Corey. So C-O-R-E-Y. Uh, Twitter, you can search me under that name or that speaker guy. Same with Instagram. And so, though, you know, if you want to find me on social media, those are some of the options. And then finally, if you want to learn more about the book, uh, of course, uh, depending on when you're seeing this, you could search it on Amazon or you could simply go to the book of why dot com. So 
That's I know that's a lot of different things, and sometimes people <laughs> will only take action on one. So if somebody's hearing this and they're only going to take action on one, go to thespeakingprogram.com because when you go there, then you can connect with me. You'll, once we connect you into our tribe, then you can actually find all the links and connect with me further. So that's probably the one hub. That's great. That's awesome. And uh, if you do, don't mind just sending me the links over just so I don't spell anything wrong, I'll put them below in the description of the video so people can just click there and then they can go to whichever platform they want to go to to connect with you. And, and that's absolutely uh, fantastic. Um, Corey, where do you need help right now? How can we help you? I, well, I guess, you know, really, like I said, I'm trying to reach people. I'm always trying to make an impact. Mm. And so I'm always trying to serve and make an impact wherever I can. And it has to be, of course, a positive impact. So really, it, it's a matter of, you know, if you're listening, watching this and saying, you know, I need help in this area. I know somebody else who needs help in this area. And that area could be, like I said, finding their why. It could be they want to speak from a stage, you know, something we talked about as well. I, I get questions all the time about how do you write and launch a book. Uh, so if you have some of these questions basically about how can you how can you use a platform to build your brand, you know, whether that's social media, whether that's the book, whether that's a stage, um, if it's that you or if you know somebody that's in that case, yeah. certainly connect them with me and just know that it's not always going to be a situation where somebody's ready to invest and that's cool. It could be just a thing where they have a quick question for me or they want to watch the free videos or they want to get something for free. We're always trying to add value even whenever it doesn't financially benefit me. Uh, the idea is to put it out there for other people and try to impact their lives. Uh, so don't hesitate to reach out even if the, the fit's not right for you to join a program or anything like that. Uh, just know that um, if you're in that situation where you need help or if you know somebody that does, connect them with me and we'll just see what kind of magic can happen from there. Awesome. Awesome. That's great, man. Um, Corey, uh, I'm, again, conscious of your time. Uh, it's been just over an hour, and uh, I, I know you're a very, very busy person. So at this point, um, I, I, if, if you need to go, then we'll, uh, we'll finish the interview. And uh, I just want to say, you know, once again, thank you so much for taking the time to be here with us. You know what? It was my absolute pleasure. And, uh, and thank you really for you know, sometimes the hosts of shows are the unsung heroes. Uh, so thank you for obviously giving this a platform today, you know, giving me a platform today and for creating a purpose. You know, they're looking for a life change and it, it may not be this episode with me. It may be a different episode, but you're by taking the boldness of taking a chance to do something like this and taking action, you're helping make that happen. So I, I want to salute you and, and thank you for making this possible. Oh, thank you, Corey. I really appreciate that. And I know you have your own radio show as well, um, which uh, is, you know, absolutely fantastic that you have interviewed so many people on there. Um, how can people actually listen to, to your radio show? <laughs> so it's funny because I'm thinking, okay, now I'm giving them another link. Uh, but what, so I'll say it this way. Again, I'll go back to the other side. If you want to go to the speaking program, right. go there. Um, and if you sign up, then we'll, we actually send you out and let you know when you can hear episodes of the show. Uh, if you, again, are saying, okay, well, that's the speaking side is not a thing for me. I'd never do that. I, I want to bypass that altogether. I don't even want to type in the word speaking. If that's who you are, um, you can actually just type the passioncure.com. And if you type that, you'll actually be brought to episodes of our show. Fantastic. Excellent. Well, Corey, I know you're a host uh, of the show as well. So uh, I just want to say thank you for doing the service that you are doing for everybody else. Uh, I'm sure that people are finding, you know, a tremendous amount of value in your show as well. So, uh, you know, thank you for that. And again, you know, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you here. The conversation has been absolutely amazing. I'm sure people are going to find a tremendous amount of value in this. I wish you all the best with your speaking, with your book, and with your actual speaking program. Um, I know that you have a lot going on right now, but, uh, you know, if there's anything that I can do for you or anybody else, you know, uh, please do let me know. I'm more than happy to make any connections or, uh, you know, help you in any way I can. Awesome sauce. Thank you so much. This has been a pleasure. It it certainly has been so thank you so much take care and guys if you have been watching this uh you know make sure you do reach out to Corey. he's you know basically giving you the keys to the kingdom um you know he has dropped a tremendous amount of value with us and i just don't see why you wouldn't want to reach out to Corey. i mean come on you know his smile alone is just worth millions all right why wouldn't you want to jump on a call with him and see that smile again all right so seriously i encourage you guys to go and reach out to Corey. just start a conversation you don't 
don't have to say much. You just have to say, hey, Corey, I listened uh, to the show, you know, the little show that you had on the YouTube channel, uh, but it was absolutely amazing. You blew me away. I really want to, you know, just say thank you. And, uh, you know, uh, that's it. Just start a conversation. All right. It's as simple as that. And then see where it goes. You never know. OK, but Corey is very well connected um, and, uh, you know, he might be able to help you with something you might not even know. You know, you you have an issue yet. You might not even know you ha you're facing with that problem. So it's Corey is certainly somebody who I think you need to reach out to. Um, as always, you know, make sure you guys share this with somebody if this resonates with you so they can benefit from it as well. Somebody close to you, somebody who needs to hear this uh, and something uh, in this, if, if this is actually, you know, resonated with you, then go ahead and take action. OK, what will be most, uh, you know, the, the best payoff for me and Corey right now is if you go ahead and take action on what has been discussed here. OK, and like Corey said, you miss 100 percent of the shots you don't take. You have to go ahead and take action on all those things. Apart from that, I just all, uh, you know, as always, really appreciate you spending this time with me. Uh, and uh, I just want to say, you know, Thanks again to Corey for this time. Thank you. All right. Take care, guys. Hustle hard. And thank you, Corey. Bye.